Hey all, John here. It's been a minute, but today we are going to be doing the XPS 13 Plus review. It's been a few weeks, but I'm back now, so let's get it. So, um, since I bought this machine, I have gone through three of these. The first machine I got, honestly, the trackpad was trash. The haptic, the haptic trackpad on this machine, since it doesn't have a physical trackpad, was malfunctioning. The motors weren't, weren't working. I did the updates, I did the BIOS updates, none of it worked, so I sent it back to the store. Um, the second one I got um, had a really bad overheating problem. So basically, if when the CPU hit 90 degrees, entire CPU would just throttle down to 400 megahertz and it would never escape that. So imagine you're in a web conference or you're typing up a Word doc with a YouTube video playing on the back. All of a sudden, your machine just comes to a halt and no response. So you got to shut down the machine. So sent that back. Third one. Third time to charm and I've had minimal issues. Every once in a while, I have problems with the laptop resuming from sleep. But that is probably an S0 issue with Fedora and not with Windows. I have not had Windows on this machine since I installed the two terabyte drive. But so far, so good on Fedora. Yes, there are some problems. Um, but then again, I don't think there are any super good Linux laptops out there other than maybe the framework and all the other um, sponsored Linux laptops that have all the handpicked components. I just wanted something that would run Linux relatively well because the night that what is it? I think I had the 9380 or something like that uh, latitude which could not run linux at all there was a really bad in, um, internal graphics problem it would only work good with an external monitor connected and i also tried the t14 but battery life was really bad on those as well and it, they always overheated so xps it is my specific laptop has the i5 1240p processor um, that is not a 15 watt typical ultra low voltage processor it has 16 gigs of RAM, Samsung 2 terabyte SSD, and it has the 3.5 inch, 3.5K OLED display. Honestly, that is probably the thing that kills the battery life the most. I don't need a high resolution display, but since it was a refurbished machine, <laughs> I think that's a pretty good deal. You know, this laptop is supposed to replace my X, not the XPS, it was basically supposed to replace my MacBook Pro 14, but as a light productivity workstation. Um, your basic productivity tasks like typing out Word docs, spreadsheets, etc., and using a lot of remote desktop and this getting into my NAS and troubleshooting stuff like that on the couch instead of doing it on my desk. Um, for stuff like that, it works, but again, I'm only getting about three to three and a half hours of battery life, and that is at half brightness on Wi Fi. That is garbage. Not good. My iPad Pro that I'm using can probably just, it can get through the whole day. I'm not gonna give you exact screen out as screen time because again, I spend a lot of time on that using DaVinci Resolve. So of course that's not gonna last the entire day, but if I'm just doing basic productivity tasks, that M2 chip is a lot more efficient than the Intel one. But everyone knows that now. Again, if you're looking at this XPS, you probably don't want a MacBook because your, your work needs Windows, but if you're buying a laptop like this for work, you're probably getting a Latitude or you're getting a ThinkPad. If you're buying this just because it's cheap, like I did, go ahead, go ahead. But probably want, you probably want to run Windows on it. Um, but yeah, um, on Fedora, honestly, the, I use Brave Browser, um, basically Chromium based, because um, I don't want to have any proprietary software that's been trying out that open source movement, you know. Um, Obsidian is one of my favorite note-taking apps now. Notion does not exist on Linux, so there you go. And one of does also do not exist. That's what I used to use before. But Notion is, yeah, not Notion. Obsidian has been good. Um, I use uh, my KeyPass database on there when I'm on the web because I don't save pa my passwords in the cloud. And what the last app? I started moving my Trillium database over as well. Um, Sync thing has been really good with getting all my documents synced between devices. Sync thing is basically a decentralized syncing platform. Um, basically, it's peer to peer. So think about BitTorrent in a way, but you're using that to sync files across devices. For me, I just have mine work locally instead of working across the internet. That's a thing. So you could have, let's say, two video editors with sync thing and it syncs those videos across the internet. You could do it that way. That's a, no, that's a nice application. But for me, I use it to sync my entire my documents folder, which includes my KeePass database, my entire downloads folder, my desktop, and my photos folder. So my phone, let's say on the S23 Ultra, if I take a photo, syncs it back to the XPS, to the NAS, and the workstation backed up everywhere and the NAS does snapshots and everything. So that's really cool. Um, I really like syncing my documents across because again, snapshot, it snapshots it on the NAS 
it's it's really amazing until it breaks which has happened to me like once or twice so that's probably because i had to hard shut down the machine when i'm on fedora um windows this would probably be a much better and more, more reliable option without using an smb share and using offline caching um but there's that don't get down a, into a rabbit hole about that but that's fedora for you um uh, let's see what is the next thing on my list small nitpicks on hardware compatibility so the first thing i noticed i think i may have mentioned this before on the previous latitude that there was a big issue with the graphics driver um, not working unless i plugged in an external monitor on the xps the webcam does not work on fedora or any of the linux distros if you buy an xps 13 plus developer edition you won't have this problem because it has a proprietary ipu6 driver already installed but because i'm on fedora i don't have that driver i could get it if i really wanted to but honestly i don't even I don't really web conference on the XPS like that, so it's fine. Um, before I put the two terabyte drive on there, I had a dual boot setup, so I would just take, let's say, do interviews on Windows and then restart. But now that I have the iPad, this machine, it's literally just a couch surfing machine. If I don't want to be at the desk, I just want to sit, watch TV and just type up documents and do whatever, that's what this laptop is for. It doesn't go outside because, again, battery life is terrible. Um, but yeah, the, the webcam doesn't work on Linux. That's one thing a lot of the Reddit's posts are complaining about another thing being the overheating and the build quality problems with the trackpad the trackpad is probably the biggest thing that will pull people away from this machine and of course the overheating because they honestly they did put too high power of a chip in this small of a chassis but it's what it is if you get a good one you get a good one I sh you shouldn't have to buy three machines to get one good one you know what i mean that should not be a thing but it is uh, but again mine was cheap didn't bug me it was refurbished and it works great so um, next thing I will talk about, um, alternative laptops. Um, honestly, you're probably going to go with a MacBook if you're looking for a laptop. A MacBook Air M2, great idea. MacBook Pro, great idea. But if you need Windows, an XPS is basically the closest you'll get to a Windows MacBook, if that makes sense. But honestly, now the, the latitudes have kind of overtaken the XPSs. If you can get a latitude at a good price, I'd recommend that instead. I actually tried the 9 to 430 um, Latitude, and that was an amazing laptop, other than the fact that it didn't support Linux very well. So if you're a Windows guy, if you're getting a laptop for work, you're probably either getting a Latitude or a ThinkPad. Let's, let's face it, there's pretty much no other option. I mean, there are, no one really cares about the Dragonfly laptops, but I haven't worked in an environment where they use those. Um, but yeah, um, MacBook is probably the top option for most consumers, and XPS if you need Windows. But honestly, Apple has done so good with their M chips it's it's hard like at least with power efficiency and the performance it's it, it's you can't beat it you know like an ipad right now is able to edit 4k video with no problem on battery but the xps can't do that so i that's one thing i did try on the xps on windows i couldn't edit any video on there at all but for photos it's fine so if you're a photographer you want a cheap laptop that's refurbished again i got mine a really good deal at my local micro center this is a great photo editing machine or for just basic Word documents, YouTube, stuff like that. But anything more, I, I, what, I, I don't think so. It's not a powerhouse like I thought it would be. So it's basically a MacBook Air. Look at it like that. Um, but moving on, um, yeah, those are the other comparative laptops, I would say. The Latitude 9430. The 9440 is now taking the XPS 13 Plus design, so only time will tell before those reviews have come out. Um, but again, MacBook. Um, I am very close to buying a MacBook if I do need it, but the iPad is doing everything I need to right now. But in conclusion, that is the XPS 13 Plus review. This has been pretty fast, um, but feel free to let me know if you guys have if you guys have any feedback. Please let me know. Um, I'm going to be doing a review on the 12.9 inch M2 iPad I have and how it's taken over, especially with SyncThing. I didn't realize SyncThing was available on iOS. It's Mobius Sync, but it's basically the same framework. Um, but that has basically taken over the XPS for me when I'm outside because the battery. Um, I'll be doing the XPS, not the XPS, the Galaxy S23 um, Ultra review as well after that. Um, most likely the 23 Ultra review before the iPad. But yeah, stay tuned for my next video. And thanks again for watching. Please again leave any feedback if you have any. And hope to see you soon.